Welcome to Old Slater Mill National Historic Landmark. I'm park ranger Mark Mello here at Blackstone River Valley National Historical Park. There are three historic buildings on this site and countless stories to investigate. Join me in exploring this place and the people who change the social fabric of this nation. Here, a new chapter in the American age of industry began more than two centuries ago. This first successful water-powered cotton spinning mill in North America opened on July 12, 1793. Why did this happen here? Why Pawtucket, Rhode Island? In 1788, Providence businessman Moses Brown decided to duplicate English water-powered textile mills here in the United States. He saw the small village of Pawtucket, located about three miles north of his home in Providence, as an ideal location to experiment. Pawtucket was home to a waterfall, which offered plenty of power for a mill. The river provided easy access to the ocean, meaning ships could travel up to just below the falls to bring in raw cotton and transport finished textiles. Pawtucket also had tool and machine makers who could build the textile machines that Brown would need. Moses Brown rented a small clothing shop by the Pawtucket Falls and began buying up experimental textile machines. Brown was missing one important thing, water-powered textile machines that actually worked. Then, in 1789, Brown received a letter from Samuel Slater, a young English immigrant who had just arrived in the United States. Slater had spent seven years as an apprentice in an English mill. He had a mechanical mind and was able to learn the entire cotton spinning process, from operating the machines to managing the workers. Slater decided he wanted to own his own textile mill, not just work in one. So he left for the United States. While in New York City, Slater heard about Brown's experimental mill. He offered Brown his services, and Brown invited Slater to Pawtucket. When Slater arrived in late 1789, he inspected Brown's faulty machines. Slater told him that if he were hired, he could get new machines up and running properly. It took about a year for Slater, working with local craftsmen including Sylvanus Brown and David Wilkinson, to create the new machines. Finally, on December 20th, 1790, success. The machines sprang to life, turning cotton into finished thread. After a year of making improvements to their textile manufacturing process, Slater and his partners, Almy and Brown, decided it was time to build a new mill to make cotton thread. Moses Brown bought a seven-acre plot about 300 feet upstream from the Pawtucket Falls. The first step was to build a new dam, along with a new raceway. Then local craftsmen like John Bucklands, a free African-American man living nearby, built the mill itself. Slater Mill opened July 12, 1793. It was small by modern standards, 43 feet long, 29 feet wide, two and a half stories tall. But from these humble beginnings, the age of American industrial manufacturing began. Here, children like 10-year-old Anne Arnold came to work. This was a new type of work, where people were not paid for what they produced, but for their time. Eventually, entire families moved to industrial communities called mill villages. Workers earned steady wages and enjoyed a sense of community, but they lived under the constant control and manipulation of their employers. Textile mills, like Slater Mill, were inextricably intertwined with slavery. Enslaved people in the Caribbean picked the first bales of cotton to arrive at this mill. Approximately 25% of the cotton picked by enslaved peoples in the American South made its way to the textile mills of the Northeast. This system was enabled by enslaved labor, but local mill owners consistently excluded people of color from working in these mills. Over the next century, Slater Mill was expanded seven times as new owners tried to keep pace with the rise of larger, technologically advanced, newer factories. When Slater Mill became a museum in the 1920s, it was restored to its 1830s appearance that you see today, featuring its trademark bell tower. After Slater Mill was opened as a museum, the Sylvanus Brown House was moved to this site. It is a great example of a colonial-era home from 1758. This was the home of Sylvanus Brown, a distant relative of Moses Brown. He was a craftsman here in Pawtucket, and it was in this house that Samuel Slater spent his first night in Pawtucket. 
The third historic building on this site is the Wilkinson Mill. The Wilkinsons were part of Pawtucket's iron working community in the late 1700s. They ran several iron shops, turning raw iron ore into bar iron, and then crafting those bars into items like anchors and tools. Ozeal Wilkinson and his son David were recruited by Samuel Slater to create the first water-powered textile machines in America. In 1810, the Wilkinsons built this stone mill. The first floor of the mill was a machine shop, while the upper two floors were used for cotton spinning. When it was built, this mill was powered by a wooden water wheel. The wheel is 12 feet wide, 9 feet high, and weighs about 8 tons. It is a mid-breast wheel. That means that the water enters the wooden buckets about halfway up the wheel, and then the weight of water starts pushing it down. As the wheel spins, the original buckets point downward and the water drains out. Water keeps flowing onto the wheel to keep it spinning. Once the wheel is moving, its power is transferred to the upper floors by a series of gears and drive shafts. Up in the Wilkinson machine shop, we can see how the water wheel's power is put to work. Belts connect the individual machines to the drive shaft. This allows different machines to be used at the same time. Sliding the belt from the neutral free wheel onto the drive wheel transfers the spinning motion of the drive shaft to a machine, letting it do work. When the machine is not in use, it can be turned off, allowing other machines to be turned on. The Wilkinsons and their mill are great examples of the ingenuity and enterprise that launched the American Industrial Revolution. In 1921, the old Slater Mill Association was formed to preserve the site and to turn Slater's Mill into a museum. Later, they took on the Sylvanus Brown House, the Wilkinson Mill, and Rotary Park. In March of 2021, Old Slater Mill Association donated the property to the American people through the care and stewardship of the National Park Service. Now we cultivate legacies of preservation, inspiration, and education together. On the grounds, you may see maintenance crews hard at work preserving historic structures and caring for the property. Inside, rangers continue the long tradition of public education at this site. You can also enjoy arts and cultural events during your visit. The people who made these buildings and worked in this mill experienced profound and lasting changes in their lifetimes. Some were experiencing freedom from bondage, and others would work for pay for the first time in their lives. At Slater Mill, people made thread, but they also found new ways to make a living and to build a new life. We invite you to explore how the fabric of the nation was woven, mended, and frayed. Sometimes, it's all in a day's work.